what's going on guys? It's Adam from GHL Mastery and in today's video, we're gonna be talking all things email. How do you set up your email in high level? How do you set up your mailing domains? And also, I wanna give you a firm understanding of how email gets delivered when you're using the LC email platform. So with all that being said, guys, let's dive in. And if you find this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Turn on that bell icon if you want even more Go High Level content for you to just dive into and learn from every single week here right on this channel. All right, guys, in this video, we're going to be talking about setting up sub account emailing domains. Now, a lot of people have trouble with this and primarily they're going to have issues because they don't have access to their client's DNS registration systems. So this is something that we often do with our partners or with our clients so that we can kind of set this stuff up with them so for better email deliverability. And if you recall from the last email setup video, we're gonna follow the exact same steps, but this time we're gonna be doing it at the sub account level. So um, right now I'm in the account settings. So if we go back over here, we're down in settings right here. You're gonna go and you're gonna to navigate to email services. Okay, now if you recall by default, when we set up the agency mailing domain, it's gonna filter down into the sub account. And so you'll notice that lc.nurturebox.com, which is our emailing domain at the agency level, is the default mailing domain for this sub account because we haven't set anything up yet to make it a branded emailing domain. So we're gonna click here and we're gonna cre click create dedicated domain. What this is gonna do is it's gonna bring us into here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna just create a sample demo subdomain of joingjhlmastery.com. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go demo mail one dot joingjhlmastery.com. Okay, so again, I'm creating a subdomain of this domain here for the mailing service domain. Okay, so we're gonna click add and verify. Now what this is gonna do, and I'm gonna show you guys the easy way, just because it it's a lot of, it's a lot faster, it's a lot easier than doing the record manually. However, in the event that they don't have access to GoDaddy, Cloudflare, Namecheap, like some of the main DNS hosting providers, you can add the records manually. Um, and it's the same, the exact same process that we covered in the last video on email services. So we're gonna go and say, set this up. All right, so now that we've gone through that, it's recognized that, hey, this domain is hosted on Cloudflare. So let's click authorize domain and we're gonna go and log into our Cloudflare account and we're gonna authorize this domain. So these are all of the records that this is going to add for us, which is all of them except for the DMARC address for this subdomain. So let's go and authorize. Now, again, guys, this might take a little while, which is totally fine. It's usually, you know, within five minutes, this will be set up and done. Um, so this is something that you have to do with your client accounts. And let me try to make this as simple as possible. If their email is, you know, name at domain.com, and that's the user account that they're logging in with every single day, then you want to make sure that your mailing domain is a subdomain of it. So it could be m.domain.com, which is would be the subdomain. So they would be getting an email that gets sent from, you know, adam at joingjhlmastery.com via adam at m.joingjhlmastery.com. That's kind of how the mailgun system works. And when you have a reply to email address that is using the subdomain that we're creating here, what that's going to do is that any reply that goes to that email is actually going to end up in the conversations tab inside of high level so they can manage and keep all of their email that's coming from the CRM in one convenient location. Okay, so that's kind of why this is really, really important. If you have a different domain, so let's just, again, same example, adam at joingjhlmastery.com, but the mailing domain that we're gonna be using is adam.m.joingjhlmasteryvip.com. Those two domains do not match, and therefore you have a higher risk of landing in the spam folder because it's not coming from the same domain. And we've got an entire document on setting up your emailing domains properly that you can get at the bottom of this video. Um, that's gonna help you guys really fully understand how to set this up, how to warm up those domains, 
um, so that you can land your email in the inbox. Just be aware that the first time you set these up, chances are that's where they're gonna land, but you do have a couple of things that you can do to increase the chances of your emails landing in the inbox, and that's probably priority number one, is making sure that the domains match the sending email, and second part is this part, the DMARC, which I'm gonna show you guys how to do right now. So let me just get logged into Cloudflare and we're gonna go set up the DMARC record for this specific mailing domain. All right, so I've got Cloudflare loaded up. First thing you're gonna notice is that it's a TXT record. So that's what we're gonna set up. And we are going to copy this right here. So it's underscore DMARC dot, the subdomain of our primary root domain. So we're gonna go into Cloudflare. We are going to add a record. We're gonna go grab the TXT right here. The name is going to be that. And then your DMARC location is gonna be this one right here. So we're just gonna copy that and we're gonna put that in here for the content. And then we are going to hit save. There you go. So we've now added a DMARC record for our subdomain of demomail1.joingghlmaster.com. Let's go back into high level and see if this has done its job. So we're gonna click verify domain. And it looks like it is verified and then we are still waiting for the SSL. So again, this can take a handful of minutes, but if you get to this page right here, you're good to go. Your DNS records got verified and now it's just an SSL pending, um, which is just gonna, again, help with getting your email in the inbox every single time. Now, basically what this is, is it gives you the ability to add multiple mailing domains that can be used in different scenarios inside the workflows, inside the emailing, through conversations, um, inside campaigns, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So why might you wanna do this? Well, if you've got email campaigns that you're using to send to your warm list and you're using workflow automations to send to your cold list, well, you might want to have different mailing domains so that you know your if your cold list mailing domain gets blacklisted, it's not going to impact your active, you know, opted in accounts that you're going to be sending email campaigns to. So, if that's the case, what you can do inside this dedicated domain section here, you can actually add another one. Um, you can add another mailing domain that is using a different domain um, or different subdomain, and then you can come into domain configurations and you can choose which domain you wanna use for each different use case. So if you wanna send from workflows using a specific mailing domain, like workflowmail. or wfmail.joinghlmaster.com, you can do that. So every email that gets sent from a workflow is gonna come from that unique mailing domain. Okay, every single time you do one-on-one -on -one conversation, so that's gonna be in the conversations tab inside high level. If you send an email from there, you could do you know, conversations.joingghlmaster.com um, and it'll send from that mailing domain and so on and so forth. So you can do this inside this by using different mailing domains, but you just set them up exactly the same way as we did in the previous one. It just gives you the ability to add multiple different mailing domains so that you can hopefully you know, not burn domains on cold traffic and things of that nature, which by the way, guys, I don't recommend that you use high level for cold emailing. Um, you'll probably burn your domains faster than you can blink um, using the high level mailing services. So we don't recommend it. However, it can be done. Just be aware that you're gonna wanna use what we would refer to as burner domains, right? You don't, you don't need these domains to be perfect. They can be variations of like a .io or a .net or a .org, whatever you want, but just don't use your main default mailing domain when you're doing cold email because if you burn that domain, you're never gonna get in the inbox. Um, and this is just one of those ways that you can kind of somewhat control that. Um, and then a little added bonus tip. If you are going to be using high level for cold email, I highly recommend that you set up a secondary sub account that's dedicated to cold email and cold email only, where you then take your live links to get people to your booking pages that are from your actual active operational domain that requires people to opt in to then get emails from your primary mailing domain. Um, it's just gonna help save a lot of time, a lot of headache um, with you know trying to now get your regular domain unblacklisted if you hit a bunch of, you know, 
blocked emails or bounced emails or unsubscribed emails that can impact your overall domain score. So if you're going to be using high level for cold emailing, I highly recommend that you set up a brand new sub account just dedicated to cold outreach and you use a different domain altogether for your email outreach that you don't really care if that thing gets burned. You can just go and get a new one. Uh, they're not very expensive. They're super cheap. I think that this one's actually really, really important for you to understand how your emails are actually being sent and delivered. So we've got a couple things that we've got to mention, right? So we've got the sender name, the sender email, and then we've got the sending domain and the reply to emails that are happening. So um, this is a little test email that I sent um, from another video and I figured I'd go back and explain this for you guys. So this is the email that I sent. So it was sent from Adam McInnes. That's the sender's name, but it was sent via demomail1.joingghlmastery.com. Okay, so if I come here and I show details on this, this is what it's gonna show up. So Adam McInnes and then my email address, this was the user that I was logged in as. So I was logged in as Adam McInnes and Adam at rmmarketing.ca. So when I sent the email through the conversations, this was the default from name and from email, okay? But it was sent via demomail1.joingghlmastery.com. So therefore, it was being sent from the LC emailing system within high level. Therefore, the reply to email is going to be Adam, which is the first name of the user, at demo one, demomail1.joingghlmastery.com. Now, what does that mean? That means that if I reply to this email, my email reply is not going to go to adam at rmmarketing.ca. It is going to go to adam at demomail1.joingjhlmastery.com, which puts that email reply directly in my high level inbox. Okay, without this setting here, we would not actually receive the emails back into the high level inbox. So that's a really, really important thing to note and understand. And I'm going to show you one more area where this is actually incredibly, incredibly relevant. Okay, so back in your settings under email services, if you go to reply and forward settings, there's a couple of things that you need to know about these things as well. So the forwarding emails, so let's just put in my email address here and hit enter. So this is gonna automatically forward any email that comes into the system to my email address. Okay, and so that's just there by default. You can also, once you've added a couple emails, you can select this forward to assigned user. So anytime that there's an assigned user and an email comes in, it's going to forward that email to that user's actual inbox. Okay, so my inbox is a Google G Suite or workspace inbox. So if I have this turned on, any email that goes into the high level system using that mail one demo or demo mail one, .joingghlmaster.com domain, it's also gonna end up in my personal inbox. Now it's also important to note that if I reply to that email from my inbox, I'm gonna be replying into the system, not to the user, okay? Now, the other thing that you can do here is you can set up a reply to address. So this is gonna overwrite the LC mailing domain when the email comes through. So the reply to email address, you can put your own email address in here, but that means that every time you send an email through conversations tab or through a workflow, if somebody replies to that email, it's going to take that email out of the high level ecosystem and directly into your inbox. So that means that you won't see the conversation history in your conversations tab anymore inside the system. Now, a reason that you might want to use a reply address instead of having it come back into the system would be maybe for cold email. Um, if you've got somebody replying to your personal email address, um, you know, it'll go directly into your personal inbox and you can handle it from there. I personally don't ever turn this on because I want all of our conversations and all of our replies and everything that has to do with the CRM, I want it to be in the CRM. So I don't really ever put a reply address in here. But if you do, just understand that it's actually going to take the email reply out of high level and into your inbox from whatever mailing service you're actually using if you set this up. 
So there you go, guys. Another bonus video on email. As you can guess, there's a lot of things that you need to know and understand about email. Hey guys, I hope you found that video useful and helpful for you getting your company set up in high level and getting your white label started with the high level ecosystem. Now, if you're just starting out your journey in the high level ecosystem, or maybe you're even an intermediate um, or consider yourself an expert that just wants to know a little bit more about the high level platform and how you can leverage it, I would encourage you to go and click the link in the description below this video and hop into our GHL Mastery program. What do we do inside of our GHL Mastery program? Well, we have five calls every single day of the week, Monday through Friday for two hours a day, where we actually help you get into your system, help you build, help you troubleshoot, and just overall help elevate your overall skill set on the high level platform. So if you're interested in getting hands on every single day support plus, a couple of bonus goodies, snapshots, AI systems, the like, then go ahead and click the link below to join our GHL Mastery VIP group. And I promise you, you will learn more in one month than you will in six months doing this on your own. We will see you in the next one. Take care.